Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who will obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let me say he got scheduled. He got scheduled to work to 11, so you know what I'm saying? He ain't going to be able to make it. Um... Let's see what we got. Let's, uh, let's open up Isaiah chapter uh, 8, verse 16. It's Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Bind up the testimony. He said, bind up the testimony among who? Seal the law among my disciples. Mmm. Not amongst the Christians, not amongst the Muslims, the Jewish people. He said, seal it amongst the disciples. What else? And I will wait upon the Lord that hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Okay. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Mm -hmm. Who is that talking? Yahushu. Out of the Yahushu. He said, I and the children that the Most High God has given me, we are for signs and for wonders. You know what I'm saying? We are for people to pay attention to. People to be marveled at. They're supposed to look and be like, oh, that's what's happening. Let's see what else happened. From the Lord of hosts, which dwells in Mount Zion, mm -hmm. and when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God, uh -huh. for the living to the dead, mm -hmm. to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That's right. And they shall, right. and they shall. No, we good. Okay. Let's grab, uh, let's pick up where we left off last week. So last week we, uh, we are in 1 Samuel chapter 22. We talked about how, uh, how Samuel started to try to escape from Saul. Um, so, I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, how David started, started to try to escape, escape from Saul. Uh, so there was a lot of back and forth in between them. David started to gain popularity. Um, Saul started to recognize that. And Saul, already knowing that it was prophesied that this kingdom would be ripped from him, he kind of got his eye on the whole situation. He's looking for like, okay, who, who coming to take my kingdom? So he's starting to see David positioned to take the kingdom. This started to be a problem for him. He's looking like, okay, well, we got to do something about this. So he starts to uh, set his mind up to kill David. So I think we left off where, you know what I'm saying, he went to his daughter's house. Remember, David married his daughter. So he went to his daughter's house and uh, heard that David was there. And his daughter lied to him and said he wasn't. Um, she put an idol inside of the bed with some ghost hair on it so it looked like him, but it wasn't him, you know what I'm saying? So when they went to, uh, they when he sent the men to go get him, you know what I'm saying, they find out, and then he asked, he was like, you know what I'm saying, why you, you know what I'm saying, why you lie to me for him? And then she lied to him again, was like, oh, well, David said, you know what I'm saying, if I didn't do it, he'd kill me. And so, you know, you can imagine that would make Pops even more mad. So now let's go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 23. We'll try to pick up what we left off. We'll try to shoot through this. And hopefully try to get to the end of uh, the end of Samuel today if we can. Verse one. Yeah, it's First Samuel chapter twenty-three. Let's do verse seven. Let me skip down a little bit. First Samuel chapter twenty-three, verse seven. Let's see what the book say. And it was told Saul that David was come to Kila, and Saul said. God has delivered him into my hand, for he is shut up, for he is shut in by entering into a town that has gates and bars. All right, so it's like going down the street. I mean, it's like going down to a block, you know what I'm saying? We're one way in, one way out. So I was looking like, oh, I got your butt now, right? He's like, God delivered him into my hands, right? God put him in a position where he about to lose to me, right? He's like, oh, I got his butt now. Let's see what Saul's talking about. And Saul called all the people to gather to war to go down to Keilah to besiege David and his men. Mm -hmm. And David knew that Saul secretly pra 
practiced mischief against him. And he said to Abiathar, the priest, bring here the ephod. Uh -huh. Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, your servant has certainly heard that Saul seeks to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as the servant, as thy servant has heard? So when he told Abiathar, remember Abiathar was the priest. He had the one priest that made it out of Eli's uh, household. So Abiathar escaped. Because you remember Saul killed all the rest of the priests because that one priest helped David. So after that, Abiathar was like, all right, uh, let me get up out of here. And let me warn David that Saul is coming for you, right? It's about to go down. So then him and Abiathar kind of got cool. David told Abiathar, listen, if you stay by me, like the person who's looking for you is the same person looking for me. You stay by me, I'll keep you safe. Because remember, Saul made David the captain over thousands. You remember? So David, he, he had a team. He wasn't just David by himself. He had about 600 men with him. So he was like, man, you stand by me. I'll keep you safe. Don't even worry about it. So he called for Abiathar at this point. Now David had a reason for calling him. He said, bring the ephod. So when a priest brings the ephod, what comes along with that ephod, the ephod is a garment of clothing. When the priest brings the ephod, what goes along, along with it are two little stones called the, the urim and the thum, thumb. Urim and the thumb, right? Um, and so those two stones... The Bible don't really explain how, but those two, two, two stones are how um, the, uh, the priest used to communicate with the Most High God. So you would ask God a question, and then the stones, the God would communicate back to you through those stones. You know what I'm saying? And only the priest would have that access. So that's why, that's why he said, look, bring the ephod. Really what he's saying is, bring me a way that I can talk to the Most High God. Then after that, he asked a question. He said, God, if I go, right... Will these people deliver me up? Like, will they trade on me? Will they give me over to Saul? Watch what the book says. <coughs> and the Lord said, he will come down. Right? So, he, no, I'm sorry. The first question he asks is, is Saul going to come down and try to get me? Right? Let's see the next question. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Uh-huh. Will Saul come down as, the, as thy servant is heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beg thee, tell me, tell your servant... And the Lord said, he will come down. Right? Keep going. Then said David, will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, they will deliver you up. Right? So the Most High God told him, not only is he going to come down, but they're going to they gonna hand your butt over. After they hand your butt over, it's going to be a problem. Right? So David is like, all right, let's get out of Dodge. Watch what he said. Then David and his men, which were about 600, arose and departed. How many? 600. So you see, he wasn't by himself. Right? He put him, he made them captains over thousands. So after he made them captains over thousands, it's good now. Right? It's, it's go time. Now it's time. Okay, you know what? These my men. Right? Imagine fighting with somebody day and night. Right? You going, you going in and out of the battle with them. Right? And then as you go through these battles, you find out the man who's really in charge, right? The king is against the man who's been leading you in the battles. But you work hand in hand with him. Like, you know what I'm saying? He didn't save your life a few times. You know that he got wisdom. He tell you, look, go this way, go that. And he always right when he do it. Chances are you going you gonna to ride with the person that you in the battles with versus the king. So that's, he's captain over thousands, but he got 600 men. So, you know, you can suppose that some of them left. You know what I'm saying? Then he got his 600. It was just like, no, nah, we rolling with you. We always roll with you. You always got the right answer. You always help us win. Because remember, David wasn't losing no battles. David was out there killing stuff. They was like, man, you, we roll. if it comes down to it, we rolling with David. So David got his 600. He get his 600. He keeping the Biathar safe. He knows Saul is after him. He's looking like, you know what? We got to get out of Dodge. So let's see where he go. Remember, David is just on the run right now because he don't want to face Saul. Then David and his men, which were about 600, arose and departed out of Keilah and went wheresoever they could go. Uh-huh. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from <coughs> Keilah and he forbade to go forth. All right? So then after that, when David escaped, David spoke to the Most High God. He got the word from the Most High God that the, that the man was coming. Right? Saul is coming. After that, David made the right decision. He said, let me escape. All right? Most High God gave him a way to escape. Same way he do us. Right? He always give us a way to escape. What is that? Grab a... What is that? Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. What is it? Grab a... It got to be a... Uh, we got 2 Corinthians chapter 10.
I need to start at version one. I don't know where it's going to be. Should I start off talking about the wilderness? It's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Now I call myself, beseech you, by the meekness and gentleness of the Messiah, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. No, that's not right. Okay, so I first read this. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 10. If it ain't 10, it can't be 8. It gotta be an even number. It can't be 8. It ain't gonna be 12. 12 is gonna be. It ain't definitely not 13. Yeah, it's 1 Corinthians. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Give me verse 1. What verse 1 say? This is it for sure. Alright. Uh, we can start at 13 if you want. Start at 13? You can if you want to. Let's hear about the example. Build up to that thing. It's First Corinthians chapter uh, ten, verse one. What does the book say? Moreover, brethren, I would not that you be ignorant how mm -hmm. that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, mm -hmm. and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, mm -hmm. and did eat the same spiritual meat, mm -hmm. and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank that spiritual rock that f that followed them, and that rock was the Messiah. That's right. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down and to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Right? So what, what, he's, what he's describing is, he's saying, listen, everybody might go through the exact same thing, had the a, had a exact same signs. Right? They'll look the exact same way, but not everybody's behavior is the exact same. So he's saying you got to base it off of behavior. Right? He said some of these people are going after lust. Some of these people are idolaters. Right? He said not everybody is in the same position. They all went through the water. They all was under Moses. Right? They all followed the darn cloud. Right? They all drank from the rock. The rock was Christ. Right? The Messiah. So he's looking at, you know what I'm saying, not, not just because everybody in the same group and they look the same, the behavior is what separates it, right? Keep going, watch this. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed mm -hmm. and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Now remember that we was looking at, uh, what was that, Exodus? Mm, yeah. yeah. All right? Our numbers. Three and twenty thousand. That was Exodus. Three and twenty thousand. Fornication, though. That, that was probably numbers. No, that was numbers. Yeah, probably numbers after uh, Balaam. Yeah. Right? So you look at it, you know what I'm saying? He's looking, he's like, he's looking at the behaviors, what separates the people. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Neither let us tempt the Messiah, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Mm -hmm. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Right? So this is all stuff that we read in Numbers, in the book of Numbers. Right? Keep going. Now all these things happen unto them for examples. For a what? Examples. Examples. Right? We supposed to be able to look at this document in our book and in our history, and we supposed to say, you know what? We can learn from that, right? We can learn from that. We can get something out of that, all right? Keep going. Upon whom the end of the world has come, or mm -hmm. come, therefore let him that think he stand take heed, unless he fall. Uh huh. There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. He said, there is no temptation taking you except as that which is common to man. What does that mean? Your situation is not different than someone has overcome it before. What's the, what's the first thing we try to do? You know what I'm saying? We get something that's like overwhelming to us. Nah, but you don't understand though. Like, you know what I'm saying? You you don't, you never been through, I don't think anybody been through what I've been through. Right? That's the first thing we like are tempted to do. And it's a reason why we tempted to do that. Because if we put ourselves in a position where we the only one, that puts us in a position where we don't have to take counsel. Right? We don't have to listen to anybody. Right? Or take accountability. Or take accountability. Because, you know, nobody understands. You can figure this out yourself, or you can't figure it out yourself. Either way, nobody else is going to understand what you're going through. Right? That's a comfortable place when, when you don't want to take counsel, or you don't want to go to a, you know, a specific direction. Right? So that's what we look at. 
The most I got is he comes right out and he got to let you know. Listen, any temptation that you up against, don't feel like it's something that somebody else has to conquer. Right? So any sin that's ever come up, any sin that we name, there has been someone who stopped doing it. Right? So that's why you got to ask the question when people say, you know, it's impossible to stop sinning. Okay, which one is impossible for you? Which three are impossible for you? Like, which one is like, do you feel like it's impossible, like nobody can stop doing it? And they can't answer that specific question. What they'll tell you is it's impossible for them to stop sinning, which may be true for them, right? It may be true for them to stop sinning. It may be impossible for them. But don't say that it's impossible to stop sinning, right? You make it impossible because you don't, you don't believe or because you choose not to. But you always have to acknowledge that this thing is possible. Like, you can do it. You just choose not to, period. Right? Keep going. What else? What else? He said, no temptation. No temptation has taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Uh-huh. But will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Right? So a lot of people take that first part and be like, yeah, God ain't going to tempt you above what you're able to handle. I know what they're saying. Right? That's not, that's not what the book says. That's how we take it. Because then we can say, you know what? Anything that I'm going through, that's how God wanted me to go through it. But that's not what it say. That comforts you a little bit if you think about it that way. <coughs> like, no matter what I'm going through, that's like, God is doing it. Like, I know that I can handle it. No, that's not what he's saying. Right? He's saying he's not going to tempt you above what you are able to handle before he gives you a way of escape. Just like he did David. He put... David was in a, in, a, in a shaky situation. David was like, okay, let me talk to God. God said, yeah, he coming. And then provided a way for him to get out of there before Saul got there. David had to take that escape. Otherwise, David would have been fighting with Saul. All right? Let's, uh, let's go. Let's jump back. Let's go, uh, to, uh, let's go to chapter 24. This is 1 Samuel chapter 24. We're going to start at verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Ben Gedi. Mm -hmm. And Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. So David got 600. Saul said, Oh, let me send 3,000 in away. Right? So David's still on the run. He's hiding out in the wilderness. Right? He's trying to hide. He's trying to, you know what I'm saying, just kind of lay low. So he's out in the wilderness. Saul so said, oh, I heard he out there. Go ahead and send 3,000 this way. Let's see what he can do with that. So let's see what happens when they get out there. And he came to the sheep coats, by the way, where it was a cave. Mm -hmm. And Saul went in to cover his feet. Mm -hmm. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. Mm -hmm. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, that you may do to him as it shall seem good unto you. Mm -hmm. And David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. Right? So what, what, is it, what, just, what just happened just now? What, you know what I'm saying? What's the scenario? Go ahead and describe the scenario for it. What just happened just now, T? Saul went into the cave to use the bathroom. How we know he is using the bathroom? That he covers his feet. That's a book, you know what I'm saying? The book says he covered his feet. You know what I'm saying? When they go there, you know what I'm saying? That's a euphemism for it, you know what I'm saying? You, you gotta kinda imagine, you know what I'm saying? When you go to the bathroom, you know what I'm saying? You sit on the toilet, you know what I'm saying? Like, what happens after that? You ever been in the stall? I don't know if girls got the same experience, but guys, like, when we in the stall, you know what I'm saying? We be down there, you know what I'm saying? Doing our little thing, you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a very, you know what I'm saying? Tranquil, you know what I'm saying? Peaceful experience. You know what I'm saying? Then you got that, you got that Gentile next to you, you know what I'm saying? And he didn't let them Gentiles be loud. They be letting that thing fire. I'll be like, it sounds like they butted mad at him or something. You know what I'm saying? That thing be like firing off. But it just kind of upset your whole experience. So now you can't even poop. You know what I'm saying? You just sitting on the toilet, just like, okay, waiting for him to get done. And you try, you ever try not to smell something? You know what I'm saying? You sitting there trying to take short breath. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I just don't want to smell nobody else's food. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? Through that process, at some point, you end up looking down. You know what I'm saying? And then when you look down, you see, you know what I'm saying? He white folk. You know what I'm saying? They, they, I don't know what wrong with these people. They always drop their pants all the way darn down. You know what I'm saying? So you just see the belt on their darn shoes. I'm like, what are you going to put them all the way down? 
what I'm saying? It's like, but you, you know what I'm saying? You making that much darn noise, you never know. You know what I'm saying? You need some wiggle room or something. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? So he down there, you look, and he covering his feet. Well, no different for our people. You know what I'm saying? Not because we like the Gentiles, but because we had, you know what I'm saying? We had, we had, we had tunics and we had, you know what I'm saying? Big old coats. So when it came down to poop, you know what I'm saying? You gotta take all that off. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, just come on out. You know what I'm saying? Get out of the thing. And it's gonna land at your feet. So when the book is saying he covering his feet, it's talking about, you know what I'm saying? He, he, taking, a, he taking a poop. So he had his stuff off, taking a poop. David comes in, sneaks up on him, because Saul was out there looking for David. David hiding out. So Saul take a break. He's like, man, I gotta poop. You know what I'm saying? Find me a good cave. Okay. Uh, boss, here go, okay. So he go in there. He's like, go on now, I gotta take a poop. He by himself. So David was looking like, oh, I can kill your butt right now. I can go kill your butt right now. But he didn't kill him. Instead, he just cut off a little bit of his coat without him knowing it. Took that little piece. Then he kind of, well, we're going to read it. Let's see what happened. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. Uh-huh. So he, after that, he felt guilty about it. He was like, man. Because that's his king. And that's somebody, that's one of his people. You know what I'm saying? So he felt guilty about it. Like, oh, man, I shouldn't have did that. What else happened? And he said unto his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, uh -huh. the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him. He said the Lord, what? The Lord's anointed. The Lord's anointed. He said, the Lord forgive me that I come against the Lord's anointed. Where would he get that from? He was anointed as king. I know, but where would he get that, that from that he shouldn't do that? <coughs> what, uh, shouldn't cut his skirt? Shouldn't mess with the Lord's anointing. Oh. What the? What's that? Because that's the Lord's anointing. That's the law. Right? Grab Exodus for you. Exodus chapter 22. Exodus chapter 22, verse 28. That's our law. All right? David was a man of the most high God. He knew our book. He knew what the law said. This whole time... The whole time, all the people looking at it like, oh, David? Oh, he over here knocking people off. I mean, Saul, Saul, you know what I'm saying? He killed a couple people. David, though? He killed, killing tens of thousands of people. So that everybody already knew David was a bad, you know what I'm saying? He's a bad boy. David killed the Goliath. He killed the giant Goliath. Saul didn't want no piece of that. Right? So they, everybody knew David was a bad boy. You don't think David could have took Saul at any moment? You don't think David could have went and ran up on Saul and just bust him across his darn head? He could have killed him right there. But it was some men David was like, no, nah, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. Because David knew our book. He knew the law. Right? Watch this. this is Exodus chapter 22, verse 28. Watch what the book say. Thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. You shall not curse the ruler of thy people. That's our law. So I'm going to go out and try to kill the man. You can't even run your mouth against the man. You think God gonna be cool with you killing him? Oh, that's crazy. What a curse mean? Uh, curse. Like, uh, like, uh, destined for destruction or something. Right. All right? You curse somebody, that means you're designating them for destruction. You're killing them. All right? Books say you can't do that. That's against our law. All right? So David had to come up with something different. He was like, all right, well, you know, that thing, that thing just don't work out. All right? That's our law. The whole book is like that, though. That, that hasn't changed. A lot of people kind of look at that as, no, that's that new Christian stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that new Christian stuff. Look at, uh, look at, uh, give me Titus. Give me Titus chapter 3, verse 1. Watch this. And after that, let's grab Romans 13. It's Titus chapter 3, verse 1. Then give me Romans 13. Christian stuff. What y'all talking about? Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to to be ready to every good work. All right? Principalities, uh, like a principality would be somebody that's uh, like a principality would be like a, a foundation. So when it's talking about a person, it's talking about the person that kind of make everything happen. Right? So you you take you take 
And you take uh, your boss, right? Let's say your boss is boss's boss. Your <coughs> boss's boss's boss, boss say, go do this to <coughs> they subordinate. Then they subordinate say, go do this to they team. And then you own they team, right? So the principality would, would have been that first person to say something. They started off. It's the principal thing. It's Think of it like a principal. Like you got the principal of a school. They say, this is how it's going to go, right? And then the rest of the school got to move in that direction, right? So the principality would be somebody who's in control. So it's a principality and what? The magistrates? Mm -hmm. Right? A magistrate is another. is a ruler, right? A magistrate with somebody with somebody in control. What up? And powers. Uh-huh. Power people be, in power. To be ready. To be ready to every good work. Uh-huh. To obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. Uh-huh. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Right? He said, just go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? That's what they say. Just go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? Don't be out here trying to cause a whole bunch of trouble. Just go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? Obey these people that rule over you. That thing ain't that thing ain't no nothing new. That thing came all the way from the Old Testament. Our book told us that. Our law told us that. Right? Grab Romans 13. Ain't nothing new about this. A lot of people looking at this and like, oh, that's just that New Testament Christian or Gentile wrote that to keep you in slavery. You know, shut up. You don't know what you darn talking about. Right, yeah, okay. Well, what's stopping you from robbing the bank right now then? Yeah. <laughs> what's your darn mouth? Right. And why you ain't run that red light? You know what I mean? Get yeah, free, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you knock it off. People make me darn sick saying stupid stuff. That made me common sense too. Like, bro, why would you put yourself in a position to like break rules? You know what I'm saying? Well, you don't have to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's be clear. It, the book ain't necessarily talking about these evil, corrupt, you know what I'm saying? Evil, corrupt people. But at the same time, if they in the control, you take you take what they give you. You know what I'm saying? Now, the book will tell you another place you speak out against evil. You know what I'm saying? You resist evil, right? Even unto death. That's what the book said. You resist evil all even unto death. But that don't mean that you rebel against the people that's in control just because they Gentile. Oh, yeah, Gentile, you ain't got no right. I'm a Hebrew. You ain't got no right to rule over me. That was the book talking about. You don't tell Just shut up. You know what I'm saying? You better line up, boy. They telling you the most I got. Let's tell you right here. It's Romans 13. Let's see why these people in power. 13-1. 13-1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for mm -hmm. there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. The powers that be are what? Ordained of God. So, I mean, Donald Trump. That's what it is. I mean, you got Donald Trump as the president of the United States, <coughs> where the African Americans are? And you tell me the book is trying to say he's ordained of God? I got that. And, uh, what was that? Nebuchadnezzar said it. Take down who he want, build up who he want. Whoever he want in that spot. Yeah, Pharaoh. He how you think Pharaoh? How you think Pharaoh got what he? You thought Pharaoh just got there because you know what I'm saying? Because he, he looked good. No, most I got put that Pharaoh th at that time for that specific reason, just so Moses could tell him, "Hey, uh, get out the way. We gonna we gonna get up out of here." And just so Pharaoh could tell him no, and then the Most High God could say, "Oh, okay, I got something for you," and show him different t t uh, ten. Well, I mean, ten different plagues. Just so the whole world. For the rest of the history of the world could look back at that very moment and be like, oh, that was something. Still to this day, we talk about 10 plagues. Poetry, movies, all that stuff, copy off of the 10 plagues that was in that was uh in Egypt. Even if they don't believe it's true. Whole world gotta move by that now. Right? Most of my God looking like I know what I'm doing. These people spazzing out over Trump, not saying you shouldn't. Spaz out over the man. Just know though. Everybody up in their position for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Don't be surprised. In such a time as this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Trump would be, you know what I'm saying? The Trump would be, a, you know what I'm saying? The, the person that's supposed to be there, you know what I'm saying? So there's something amazing to happen. Who knows? Or not. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Just know that everybody in power for a reason. You know what I'm saying? And it's not always for their good. You know what I'm saying? May not be for Trump good. Maybe for our good. That thing might be, he might just rile enough people up just so it caused a little bit of an outrage just so some reactions start happening. <coughs> a lot of our people docile. A lot of our people, we ain't thinking about darn nothing. We just sit here just going with the flow. But then you start shaking stuff up, right? You get somebody like Trump and everybody reacting and freaking out. Hey, stuff start stuff starts shaking up now. Now you, now you got the, the, the Jesse Smollett guy, right? Because you start shaking. Stuff is shaking too much.
So now it's like you get caught in the hype because like the media tell you hate Trump. And then you in media and you you got a, a hit TV show that you might get kicked off of. Okay, what's my next check? You know what I'm saying? I gotta I gotta get some promotion because I make a little bit of music and all that. I need some promotion. Mm. You know who's an easy target right now? Everybody's against him. Trump. I tell you what, I get beat up instead of just saying I got beat up. I got beat up by guy, white guys saying MAGA country, right? These racist, and you know what else they did? They hung a noose around my neck. Y'all didn't believe? Listen, a couple weeks before, I sent a note. I mean, they sent a note to the news station. And it was talking about how they racist and some other stuff. You put this whole little storyline together. Why? And then your co-worker, right? Your co-worker, all your co-workers is riding with you on it. They probably believe it too, though. Because now we've all been set up, right? We've all been set up to what? Hate Trump. So stuff gets agitated. So then you start to weed certain things out, right? They start getting weeded out. Then you look at Trump, and he, Trump really got some real problems. He started to get weeded out. And so then it leaves people right in the middle that's actually calling it how you see it, right? Everybody, eventually everybody get tired of all the, the rest of the stuff. You don't get tired of everybody freaking out for no reason. You get tired of Trump really having, you know what I'm saying, some, some real issues. These are just going to be left in the middle with the people who call it just like it is. And that's where something can get done. Who knows what's about to happen? They still try to blame Trump for what the man did. Oh, no, you know, these people ain't letting That's Trump. crazy. They ain't letting Trump off that dog. You see what Trump did? I was like, no, Trump didn't have that to do with this man lying about getting knocked out. <coughs> no, no, yeah, they, that's, they, 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 like, they, they, like, they not letting Trump off no It's like Trump do a lot of stuff that's not cool. Like, just don't, don't, don't put all the stuff that don't got nothing to do with him on they him. Ain't, like, they ain't got no time. Yeah. They look at Trump like, you got away with too much already. So they ain't giving him no, no W. That's he ain't got away with, talk, got away with being caught on camera talking about how he going to do something to a woman. You know what I'm talking about? And they made president after that. I understand it. I'm looking at it like, that's crazy. Imagine if Obama said got caught on camera saying some crazy stuff like that. Yeah, he'd have been done. That, that, that. <laughs> that boy would have been, they'd have shot the man. Yeah, he'd have been done. He'd have been darn done. I, I get, I understand the frustration. They're looking like, this. you just gonna walk right up into your wall house, right, White House after doing that crazy stuff, like all the crazy stuff you say and do. And you get to go right up in there, no problem? You win still? Like, how does that happen? I, I understand the frustration. You just can't react. Mm. You know what I'm saying? people react and they play right into the man's hand. He got a whole middle section of the, of the country that don't trust media, don't trust all these different antics. And so then y'all react by being media and doing all the antics. And so all I do is make these people that don't trust y'all be like, oh, okay, this is why we don't trust you. So out of pure rebellion, they're going to look at Trump and say, you know what? Grab her by her thing. They sick of these politicians. They sick of it. It's just rebellion. That's all it is. It's a rebellion. This whole thing is a rebellion. It's a rebellion on both sides. You got people rebelling against Trump, and you got people re rebelling against the people that rebel against Trump. And at some point, it's going to leave a group in the middle, and that's where the real shots are going to be. I ain't going to lie. Call. I ain't going to lie. I did like I did like seeing their faces when they won. When the Democrats yeah. and the politicians was like, "How could this happen?" That thing was so hilarious. Be crying, bro. <laughs> and the I oh, was like that thing was funny. I was like, "Oh, that's, that, you know, that's rebellion." In it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's the only way we can rebel. Why these white folks freak out? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't none of them on our side. They good. No, not at all. None of them on our side. That thing. We gonna get whooped out by both sides. You know what I'm saying? For us, it's like you know what I'm saying. You got. You got, you got half a dozen in one hand, you know what I'm saying, and six in the other. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, how you want to call it? You know what I'm saying? How you want to call it? Like, how can a black man vote this country? Like, he can vote all he wants. You just gotta, yeah, but like, but like, gotta vote for somebody that, you know what I'm saying? You got you to gotta be, be willing to say, you know what? Even though this vote might not go towards the person that's winning, just, for the, just off of the strength, I ain't voting for y'all. I'll vote for this guy. Just off the strength, I ain't voting for y'all because eventually I send a message. Or just say, hey, I'm a registered to vote and I ain't gonna vote at all. That way they count them numbers, they be like, there's a whole bunch of black folks that's registered, but they refusing to vote. Now somebody gotta talk to us. Right? After that, at some point, somebody gotta talk to us. Somebody gotta be come up, okay, listen. You know what I'm saying? We need you. We usually get the wackest representation, though. Yeah, because we, we give our stuff away for free. All right? As long as we give giving stuff away for free, I mean, who's gonna work for it? We know that's one on one. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? Just like, just like in the streets. Who gonna work for something you get it for free? You got there. I mean, you got some work. You get out some work for free. 
You know what I'm saying? Here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. What they gonna do? Stop coming? They coming more. Right? They coming more and they gonna expect it for free. What, what you gonna do? So when you start charging them, now they gotta work for it. Now they gotta go do something. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter. It's like no matter what it is, you give it away for free, people take it for granted. Go get her a cover then, son. Right? So you gotta, you know what I'm saying? You gotta put yourself in a position. It's like, okay, well, how are we gonna get some attention? Eventually, they gotta come talk to us. Where we at? Romans. Is it Romans? Did we finish it? What verse? Uh, whosoever resists the power, resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Mm hmm. Well, rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. He said, rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Keep going. Will you then not be afraid of the power? Uh-huh. Do that which is good, and you shall have praise of the same. Mm-hmm. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if you do that which is evil, be afraid, for he bears not the sword in vain. Right. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that does evil. It's, 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 some, it's probably some scenarios where... Where some people that are innocent according to U.S. law got shot. Like some black people got shot and got killed by cops or something like that. It's probably some scenarios with that. I don't necessarily believe there's any scenarios where you have a righteous man that's innocent according to the word of the Most High God that got shot. And that's what this book is trying to tell you right now. He's trying to tell you that these police and the people that's in power, they're a punishment for God. Right? They don't know what they're doing. They don't know that they, you know what I'm saying? They don't know what they're doing the will of the most high God. In their mind, they just being evil. It's two, killing two birds with one stone. But you smoking some weed, or you doing anything that the most high God say don't do. Right? For U.S. law, that's legal. You good. In terms of how these people think it, they think they just being corrupt cops. But the way God is looking at it is, I told you not to do that. So now, I'm going to put this cop on you who think he just being corrupt. He just think he being a jerk. That wouldn't have touched you, though, had you been doing what I said. I would have kept you away from that whole scenario. And that's why the books say, respect the authorities above you. Because God put them there for a reason. Same thing with Trump. Right? Do what you're supposed to do. Stuff ain't going to affect you. And if it do affect you, it's God will, will for it to affect you. You know what I'm saying? It's people that's acting up. That's why it don't happen to nobody else but us. Because this whole book telling us, like, y'all better knock it off. Yeah, don't be thinking that you're going to follow the same rules as these other people, get the same rights as these other people. No, not at all. That thing's different. You that thing's like the same thing with your own kids. It's like, you're not going to act like how them kids act outside. Yeah, you go do what I say. That thing's different. So, same thing with God. It's like all these Hebrews in this country, God, like, oh, you can't do that. <coughs> the Gentiles do that, you need to do this. Your boy got to line up. <laughs> Excuse me. You know what I'm saying? Let's jump back over uh, uh, where we leave off in uh, Samuel. Samuel 24. Uh, yeah. All right, Samuel chapter 24. I think we left off verse 7. Yeah. It's 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 7. <clears throat> so David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. All right, so Saul got done pooping. He went, you know what I'm saying, went ahead and went on his way, right? David told all his people, he was like, no, nah, don't even do nothing to him, man. We can't, we can't do that, man. That's out of line. That's, that's the Lord's anointed. I can't put my hands on him. That's crazy, right? I don't even know what I was thinking. I shouldn't even cut his robe. You know what I'm saying? He was just kind of like making everybody relax. Everybody ready to get Saul, right? Everybody relax. All right, let's see what happened next. And David also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My lord, the king. Mm -hmm. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. Uh -huh. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeks your hurt? Uh -huh. Behold, this day your eyes have seen how that the Lord has delivered you today into my hand in the cave. All right, so he, he's asking Saul, he's like, why are you listening to these people that's telling you I'm trying to hit you? I'm trying to kill you and I'm trying to hurt you. He's like, man, I'm trying to tell you, I could have killed your boy. If I wanted to kill you, I could have killed your boy just now. Right? Watch this. And some bade me to kill you, mm -hmm. but my eyes spared you. Mm -hmm. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. 
Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of your robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the skirt of your robe and killed you not. Know, know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand. Right? So he said, you could, I prove it out to you. I cut off your robe. If I wanted to get you, I could have got you. Since I didn't get you, you should know that it's no, nor is neither evil nor what? Transgression. In nor my transgression hand. in my hand. Right? I don't have no ill intention towards you. Keep going. And I have not sinned against you. Mm -hmm. Yet you hunt my soul to take it. Mm -hmm. The Lord judge between me and you, and the Lord avenge me of you. Mm -hmm. But my hand shall not be upon you. Mm -hmm. As says the proverb of the ancients. Wickedness proceeds from the wicked, but my hand shall not be upon you. Right? Watch this. Jump over to uh, chapter 26. Right? So at the end of this, Saul is like, oh, man, you a better man than me. You know what I'm saying? I can't believe I did this. I apologize. Right? It's all, Saul, Saul is like, oh, yeah, you really ain't after me. You know what I'm saying? You could have killed me and you did it. You're oh, definitely going to be king. Right? Yeah, told him, told him he's going to be king. Like, you know what I'm saying? You the right man to be king. Right? So in that moment, you know what I'm saying? Saul was moved. <laughs> But then Saul ended up going back. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. This is another, this is a, this is about two chapters away. It's 1 Samuel chapter 26. Give me uh, we ain't gotta read it all. Let's jump on down to uh, mm, let's jump on down. Let's start at one. Let's start at one. And the Ziphites came to Saul at to Gibeah, saying, Does not David hide himself in the hill of Hakiliah? Hakila? which is before Jeshimon. Mm -hmm. Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him, mm -hmm. to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. Mm -hmm. And Saul pitched in the hill of Hakila, mm -hmm. which is before Jeshimon, by the way. But David abode in the wilderness and saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. And David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul was coming very deep. And David arose and came to the place where Saul had pitched, and David beheld the place where Saul lay, and Abner, the son of Ner, the captain of his host. Mm -hmm. And Saul lay in the tr trench, and the people pitched round about him. Then answered David and said to Ahimelech, the Hittite, and to Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, brother of Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul to the camp? Mm -hmm. And Abishai said, I will go down with you. Mm -hmm. Abishai was with him. Mm -hmm. So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster. Right? So now David caught him slipping again. Saw so asleep, and he got his spear in the ground. Watch this. But Abner and the people lay round about him. Then said Abishai to David, God has delivered my enemy into your enemy into your hand this day. Now therefore, let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear, even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. Right? So Abishai was like, listen, we got him right here. Dead to rights. I tell you what, I take his spear, I smile, I hit, I stick him through with that thing. I won't even have to hit him a second time. He's like, one shot, I'll get him right now. Just let me get him. Right? He had to ask because he already knew David wasn't with it. He's like, listen, one shot, we can just have this thing over with. Right now, we got him. Watch what David said. And David said unto Abishai, destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Mm -hmm. And David said, Furthermore, as the Lord lives, the Lord shall smite him, or his day will come to die, mm -hmm. or he shall descend into battle and perish. Mm -hmm. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord, uh, Lord's anointed. Mm -hmm. But I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is in his bolster and the cruise of water and let us go. Mm -hmm. So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster, and they got down, got them away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awakened, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord was falling upon them. Then David went over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill afar off, a great space be, being between them. And David cried to the people, and to Abner, the son of Ner, saying, Answerest thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who art thou that cries to the king? Mm -hmm. And David said unto Abner, art, art not thou a valiant man? And who is like unto thee in Israel? Wherefore then has you not kept the Lord the king? Mm -hmm. For there came one of the people in to destroy the king, thy lord. Mm -hmm. This thing is not good that you have done. 
as the Lord lives, you are worthy to die because you have not kept your master, the Lord's anointing. All right. Now see where the king's spear is and the cruise of water that was at his bolster. And Saul knew David's voice and said, is this your voice, my son, David? Uh-huh. And David said, it is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, why does my lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done, or what evil is in my hand? Now therefore I pray thee, let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If the lord has stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. But if they be of the children of men, cursed be they before the lord. For they have driven me out of this day from abiding in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go serve other gods. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord, for the king of Israel has come out to seek as a seek a flea, as when one does hunt a, a part, partridge in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Then said Saul, I have sinned. All right, so now, they, David was yelling out from the mountain. He's still hiding. But it's nighttime. Saul is asleep, right? So he run out and he run down to get Saul. He see him. He see his spear. The boy was like, look, we can get him right now. I can hit him one time. One shot, got him. You know what I'm saying? It'd be done if I get him. Right? Won't even be a problem. You just let me get at him right now. They was like, no, we can't do it. Take a spear, take the water, let's go. They run up, hide, then they yell out. They say, Abner. Right? Abner was like his bodyguard. You know what I'm saying? He's like, Abner. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? What's the problem? You know what I'm saying? Abner, like, who is this? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't you know that? You know what I'm saying? Like, your life should be on the line because you're supposed to be protecting the king. Somebody just ran down there to the king. They could have got his butt. I'm like, you know, what in the world are they talking about? He's like, oh, we got his spear. Saul recognized the voice after that. He's like, oh, what's going on? He's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I could have ran down and got you, but I ain't going to put my hands on the anointed. You keep on coming after me like I'm coming after you. I'm nothing but a flea to you. I'm nothing. You know what I'm saying? Why you keep chasing after me like it's a problem? So he explained all it all to him. Then after that, Saul was like, I'm going to go ahead and read what Saul said. Then said Saul, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do you harm. Uh -huh. Because my soul was precious in your eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. Mm -hmm. And David answered and said, Behold the king's spear, and let, none, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. The mm -hmm. Lord render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For mm -hmm. the Lord delivered you into my hand today, but I will not stretch forth my hands against the Lord's anointed. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in my eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Mm -hmm. And Saul said to David, Blessed be you, my son David. You shall both do great things and also shall still prevail. Mm -hmm. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. All right? Grab Leviticus chapter 18. This is Leviticus chapter 18. Give me verse 16. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 16. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife, it is thy brother's nakedness. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, neither shall thou take her son's 18? daughter. 18? Yeah. Give me 19 then. Yeah. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Watch this. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Okay. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. He said, Thou shalt, thou shalt not what? Avenge nor bear any grudge against the ruler, of, against the children of thy people. You think David? You think David didn't know our law? They were looking like David had every reason to bear hold a grudge now and to avenge himself. But the book tells him, You shall not avenge nor shall you hold a grudge against any of the children of your people. So when David came down to it, every time he had a chance to kill him, you see David went on down there to do it. But then he look at it like, no, nah, man, we can't do this, man. Just take, just take the spear, get the water, let's go up here. Then he had to try to talk it out, right? Because he had a feeling like, man, I can do this, but no, nah, I can't do that. And remember, David's not no softy. Remember, David is a killer, right? When it came down to it, he was the one that stepped up to get Goliath. 
He took out the bear and the lion. He the one that said, you know what I'm saying, David killed, you know what I'm saying, tens of thousands. He the one when Saul was like, listen, just bring me back, you know what I'm saying, 104 skins and you can have my daughter. How many David bring back? He said, oh, I'll get you 200 of them, easy. Four skins? Oh, that's easy, easy money, 200. That means he killed 200 people, easy. David is not like no soft person. He's just looking like, I can't make that move. Like, I can't kill him. Right? My book tells me I can't do that. Right? Grab a, grab a, let me see what else we're working with here. Grab a James chapter 1, verse 8. I mean, uh, verse 1. We're going to read down to verse 8. This is James chapter 1, verse 1. So by doing that, it puts it puts Saul in a position where Saul has to see that even though he knows what type of person David is, right? Saul, Saul is legitimately afraid. He's looking like, I'm the king. I know David is coming for my king. I mean, for my, uh, for my kingdom. And I know David is with the business. Like, David will do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, not only can he do it, he can get me killed or kill me, but he will. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, this is a bad man I'm dealing with. So Saul is not, we kind of look at it like Saul just being evil. Saul is looking like, I'm the king. Obviously, David is going to end up being king. What does that mean for me? Like, it can't be two kings at once. It ain't like I can just give up the kingdom. I have to die for that to happen. Right? He's not stupid. He knows what this means. When, when the most high, see, so we got to look at it as Samuel just saying, oh, you're, it's not, we got to look at it like president, like, oh, your term is up. That's not how it worked. The king is going to die if there's going to be another king. No matter how you look at it, king has to die if there's going to be another king. you either going to die and pass it on to your son, or you're going to die and somebody's going to take the kingdom from you. So as soon as Samuel told him, I'm ripping the kingdom from you, he knew what that meant. He knew, oh, my, I'm dead. That's what you're trying to tell me. I'm dying. So he's now what he's looking for, he's trying to protect his life. He looking at David, he's looking like, Oh, he can do it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like somebody that, that some weenie came up like, oh, yeah, I'll knock him off. I know you ain't going to be the one. He looked at David like, well, oh, that's a bad man. David can get the job done. So what his whole mindset is, let me catch David slipping. Because I'm not, I can't take David head up. I mean, uh, I can't, yeah, I can't take David head up. That's not going to happen. So if he got 600, let me send 3,000 men out in the wilderness to find him. Right? I'm not going to try to do 600 versus 6. That's crazy. I don't make no sense. I'm going to lose. That's David we dealing with. Right? So that's his mindset. So then when David starts showing kindness to him, like, look, man, I could have got you. That moves him. Each time you can see it moves him. It's like, man, bro, it's like, all right, man. You know what I'm saying? You right. You more righteous, man. You going to make a great king and all that. Because he's looking at him like, man, this is a righteous dude. But then he always go back and be like, you know what I'm saying, get to himself and he be like, man, I'm about to kill that boy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he got me messed up. I'm still going to catch him slipping. So he back and forth, right? And that's the position that it is. When you let the Most High God take vengeance, that's the position that it put people in. They're going to be all over the place because they don't know how to handle that. It's easy to have aggression against somebody who have, have aggression towards you. That ain't easy money. You know what I'm saying? You mad, you know what I'm saying? Be like, oh, that's easy money. My wife, you came in today, you were trying to be mad at me, wasn't you? I was not trying. Listen, I can't, I hit it with it. That ain't easy. I hit it with it. I don't got to try to be I mad. I hit it with that. I was like, baby, I love you. I don't know what I said to you. I said something slick, though. Her boat was like, what you going to do? <laughs> right now. <laughs> you were trying to be mad, and then I kissed you. <clears throat> Your wife, you got me, wife. Like, oh. Just darn me. <laughs> but that's how you do it. I couldn't take no vengeance. Right? I could have told her no. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What, what were you trying to do? I could have told her, said, I could have said no about something. I don't know if I had nothing to say today. But I could have said no about something. Right? You ain't got no time for all that. You know what I'm saying? You got to let them things ride. Go with the flow. Make it happen. You know what I'm saying? You do that thing, you can get further. Because it didn't put the other person in position like, why am I tripping? You know what I'm saying? Why am I tripping? Why, you know what I'm saying? Why, why are we having issues right now? Why ain't we working together? You know what I'm saying? Why ain't we filling this thing out? Right? Why is you tripping? Yesterday I came in. What'd I do? What you was painting? You put the hot dog in the 
one from the other. And bash me about making chili. No, I'm watching your mouth now. I didn't bash nobody. I put the hot dog in the oven. Nobody had to tell me. Yes, I did. Yeah. That's not the point. What else I do? Zahar put himself in the bath. No, I thought it was in the I, I commanded Zahar to put him and put to get in the bath. And then who else? <coughs> and then you didn't unplug the bath, so now. Here we go. You see that? You know what I'm saying? Here we go starting again. Anyway, David. You sound like you can't get nothing right. <laughs> David! You know what just trying to sell for the book like that. He's trying to score points. My man, he was airballing them tanks this whole time. Let's go. You gotta run laugh now. So, you know what I'm saying? You look at it, and the Most High God is trying to put us in a position where he can take the vengeance for us. If he takes the vengeance for us, that thing ain't gonna be nice and sweet. You know what I'm saying? We try to take it ourselves, it's a problem. Watch what James says. It's James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God, of the Lord Yahushua, and of the Lord Yahushua the Messiah, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. All right, he's talking to our people. You know what I'm talking about? That thing say 12 tribes. Guess who he's talking to? Hebrew. Let's see what else. Greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. <laughs> Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. Mm -hmm. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and in an entire wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Uh huh. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. He said nothing what? Wavering. Okay. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Mm-hmm. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. So what do you think Paul? I mean, uh, Saul was? If Saul was sitting there like, oh, man, you know what, David, you righteous. Then the next moment he's like, oh, I'm going to get your butt. Uh, excuse you. That's double-minded. He going back and forth. He like a wave that's just going back and forth, getting tossed about. Right? Let's read it. Let's see. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in he, uh, that he is exalted. Uh huh. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low. Is that right? Yeah. What, what, what was that? Verse nine. Oh wait, wait, sorry. No. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Mm -hmm. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Mm -hmm. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Mm -hmm. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is in that he is exalted. All right, this is Revelation chapter three. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Saul was unstable. That's what we're looking at. But that's the position that it put him in. When he saw when he saw that man when he saw David behaving kind kindly to him, he didn't know what to do because he's like, man, I'm trying to kill your butt, and every time you could have killed me and you didn't kill me, so now he don't know what to do. So he double minded about it. He's like, man, I'm sorry, man, I don't even do that. <coughs> so David turned his back. He's like, man, I'm about to get his butt, right? So he just he and he mean it each time. Like he just double minded. Let's see. This is uh, Revelation, my father. This is Revelation chapter 3, give me verse 14. And unto the angel of the congregation of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, mm -hmm. the beginning of the creation of God. Mm -hmm. I know your works and that you are neither cold nor hot. Mm -hmm. I wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew you out of my mouth mm -hmm. because you say I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and know not that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Mm -hmm. I, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich and, wild, and white raiment that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear and anoint your eyes with in eye salve that you may see. All right? That wasn't Saul. Alright? Saul wasn't didn't choose on being cold or hot. Saul double-minded. He's going back and forth. He lukewarm. Right? 
That was the most I got is warning us against right here. He's like, man, just choose a side. Right? You have to be all the way righteous or you be all the way evil. Right? But choose a side. Acknowledge it. Otherwise, you're going to be in the middle. And what the, the, the most dangerous part of the people that's in the middle, if they convince themselves, even though they're evil, you know what? God still loves me. I'm all right. What I'm doing is not really wrong. Right? If that's your mindset, how can you ever be saved if you convince yourself of that? It's different now if you're just cold, right? You're just like, I know I'm wrong. Right? I know I'm rejected by God. I know God ain't dealing with me right now. God ain't hearing none of my darn prayers. Right? You say all that, even though you're on the opposite spectrum, there's salvation that could come from that because you could be like, at any moment, I like I know where I am. Right? The most high by the grace of God, if He lets you, if He lets you exist long enough to repent. At least you know where you are. You sitting there convincing yourself that you know what, I'm all right, but you headed to destruction. That's lukewarm. Most of I got to spit you out with that. Right? Let's see what else we got. Let's go to, uh, all right, finish that out. What else we got right there? All right, that is. That is. All right grab, uh, grab Romans chapter 12. Grab Romans chapter 12. Let's do verse 1. Matter of fact, give me verse uh give me verse 18. If it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Mm -hmm. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. He said, avenge not yourselves, but rather what? Give place unto wrath. Right? Because watch this. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And that come from what? Deuteronomy, right? Deuteronomy chapter 32. He said, I'll repay. Most high God said, don't worry about it. The vengeance is mine. Don't try to take no revenge for yourself. I'll repay it. I get it. It's going to come. Right? Do you think it came for Saul? 1 Samuel chapter 31. Let's read about how it ended up coming for Saul. This is 1 Samuel chapter 31. David ain't had to lift a finger against Saul. Most high God to take care of this stuff. It's 1 Samuel chapter uh, 31 verse 1. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. Mm -hmm. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons, and upon and the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab. So you remember, Jonathan was David's best friend. Jonathan got killed in war, right? And who else? Slew Jonathan and Abinadab and Malachi Shua, Saul's sons. Right? Also, well, not all Saul's sons, but some of Saul's sons got killed. Three of his sons got killed. Right? What else? And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him. Right? So then Saul got hit with an arrow. And what else? And he was sore wounded of the archers. Uh-huh. Then said Saul unto his armor bearer, Draw your sword, and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me. Right? So then he had an arrow fall through him. He is sore wounded. He wasn't dead. So he's about to die. He's you know, wounded to where he knew that they were going to come and abuse him, man. They are going to torture him. So he's looking like... All right, look, he told his boy, his armor, the person that carried his armor, he was like, go ahead and kill me. Go ahead and thrust me through, because if not, they're going to come through and they're going to torture your boy. Right? And I don't want to get tortured, so he's just like, man, just go ahead and take my misery. You know what I'm saying? Put me on my misery right now. Right? Let's see what happens. But his armor bearer would not, for he was so afraid. Therefore. Right? The armor bearer was looking like, nah, I ain't doing that crazy. What if somebody find out I killed the king? That's my darn head. He's like, no, that's crazy. So I can't do nothing like that. I can't put my hand against the Lord's anointing. The armor bearer wasn't crazy. I can't do that. Let's hear it. Therefore, Saul took a sword and fell upon it. Right? So Saul, you know what I'm saying? He already got a, a, a you know what I'm saying, a, a arrow in him. So he's sore wounded. He just took a sword. You know what I'm saying? He kind of set that thing up and just let himself fall on the sword. So he killed himself. Right? He killed himself to keep from the, the Philistine coming to kill him. All right? Keep going. 
And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and died with him. All right, his armor bearer was like, oh, I can't believe this happened. So the armor bearer didn't kill himself. You know, there's a bull, all of them just out there darn dead. Israel got whooped out by the Philistines. You know what I'm saying? His two, his three sons got killed by the Philistines. He got hit with an arrow. He killed himself. His armor bearer ended up killing himself too. And that was the end of it. It's going to tell you later on. Oh, keep reading. It's going to tell you right now, I think. So Saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men that same day together. Uh huh. With the men of Israel that were on the other side of the valley and they that were on the other side of Jordan saw that the men of Israel fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook the cities and fled. And the Philistines came and dwelt in them. Uh huh. And it came to pass on the morrow when the Philistines came and stripped the slain that they found Saul and his three sons fallen in Mount Gilboa. Uh huh. And they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and sent it sent into the land of Philistines round about to publish it in the house of their idols. They cut off the man and among head. the people. Right? They cut off the man's head. And they right. put his armor in the house of Ashtaroth and they fasted. They fastened his body on the wall of Beth Shean. Mm hmm So then they made the mockery of the man and they put him on the wall. So that's the Lord's vengeance. Right? That's what we see. That's how the most high God do it. We don't have to read it, we don't have to get it. But uh all this was predicted. Right? At one point we skipped it, but at one point Saul was frantic and he went and even though his commandment in the land was nobody should seek familiar spirit, because that was against our law. And he used to uphold that thing. He 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 made his own decree. If I catch somebody doing that, I'd kill him. He dressed himself up and he went out to go seek familiar spirits. Right? Because uh let's let's just grab it real quick. Grab um Grab uh, 1 Samuel chapter 28. It's 1 Samuel chapter 28. Give me verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 3. First Samuel chapter 28, verse 3. Walk the Saul pitched in the hill of Hakila, which is before Jeshimon. Wait, sorry. I'm on 26. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. Right? So Samuel died. Right? Oh, the whole, the, all the people, we are the whole country, we sat there and we mourned over the man. What else? And the Philistines gathered themselves <coughs> together and came and pitched in Shunan. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. Mm -hmm. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. Mm -hmm. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by the dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then so Saul was feeling like he is in a dark place at this point. He said he couldn't get an answer from the Most High God no matter what he did. So he is going. he's starting to feel desperate. Let's see what else happened. Then said Saul unto his servant, Seek me a woman that has a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit at Endor. Mm -hmm. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, and he went, and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night, and he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto him, Behold, you know what Saul has done now that he has cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Mm -hmm. Why then lay thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, there shall no punishment happen to you for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man comes up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me and answers me no more, mm -hmm. neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore, I have called thee that you make that you make no, make that you may make known unto me what I shall do. All right, watch this. Then said Samuel, Why then do you ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from you? 
and has become your enemy. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has done to him as he spoke by me. For the Lord has rent the kingdom out of thy hand and gives it to your neighbor, even to David, mm -hmm. because you obeyed not the voice of the Lord, nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Mm -hmm. Therefore has the Lord done this thing unto you this day. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shall you and your sons be with me. And the Lord So he told him right there, you're going to be with me tomorrow. Right? So he went out trying to seek a familiar spirit to get an answer from God because he couldn't speak to God in any other way. Then after that, he got an answer that he wasn't looking for. He said, oh, your butt's going to be dead. All Israel is going to be delivered into the hand of the Philistines and your son's going to be with you. Right? So all this was predicted. Saul saw all this stuff coming. Right? But he kept trying to avoid it, trying to wiggle out of it. Then it ended up happening. And it all happens because most our God, or I'm sorry, David, uh, gave the Most High God the space to have vengeance. David said, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to keep with the law. I'm just going to keep it with the book saying I ain't going no further than that. Right? So that get us to the end of uh, 1 Samuel. We're going to go ahead and jump into 2 Samuel. Start to look at, you know what I'm saying, what we got there and how to see where we can go. Uh, any questions or anything? All right, well, let's pray. <coughs> up. 